Hi, I'm Andre Royo. I'm a shadow and act. And you want me to tell you how I made it. I didn't know I made it yet. I'm still making it, but. I had moments in my life where I recognized I was on the right path, so to speak. Uh, I remember growing up in the Bronx, me and my boys went to the movie theater to see Rocky. And that was the first time I, I understood the power of cinema because I didn't know why in the Bronx, uh, movie theater full of black people were rooting for the white guy to win. It was weird to me. I was like, Apollo's not a bad guy, he's like Ali. Why are we rooting for the white guy? But I recognized storytelling and I recognized how you can be influenced uh, by the power of cinema and great storytelling. So that was the first time I, 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 I recognized that I, I might want to be a, a, a part of that uh, craft. But I didn't know how to get, you know, get in. I didn't know what that meant. I wasn't really good at the schooling. wasn't really going to college or anything like that. I was working construction, you know, doing the sidewalks, the, jig, the hammer, making a lot of noise. And my man's girl in the Low East Side was going to an acting class called HB Studios. And I went with her, went to the class, and you know, I saw a room full of actors, or a, room, a room full of dreamers. Everybody looked like they were all wanted to make it. I felt like I fit in. I was the only black guy, so I was a superstar. So they loved everything I did was raw. Everything I did was special. And I was like, no, it's just black. Don't worry about it. But I took advantage of it. I thought theater was gonna be, you know, theater was gonna be what I was gonna do for a living. I thought it was great. There's such power and such an emotional connection you have with the audience. And it's the most spiritually satisfying uh, of, the, of the art form is uh, doing theater, doing stage. So I was like, this is great. I do stage, I, you know, I kill it. I go, you know, you know, go off and sign some playbills and then go get drunk and tell the rest of the cast who fucked up. That's what I thought was special until I heard some chick say I'm pregnant and then it wasn't special anymore. It was broke and I needed real, real money. So I looked into film and television and back then Law and Order was hiring every black guy to do thug number one, convict number two, rapist number three. And I was like, this is great. This is how every black actor in New York was working. Cause we was on Law and Order. They had three, right? They had Criminal Intent, SVU, and the regular Law and Order. So we were working all day. Like we were, I was, I was three different characters in one episode one time. It was, it was crazy. And then I was working, uh, at a place called the Hard Rock Cafe Bathroom. I was in the back, making sure you wash your hands. But I know I walked out and was walking down the street, it was around 42nd Street, and I'm looking at all the marquees, all like the lights of different actors in different Broadway plays, and I'm wearing a tuxedo, and I smell like urine. And I was like, no, this is not gonna be, uh, this is not gonna be my destiny. That was a turning point where I, you know, when everybody told me that I could make it, and I knew I could, and I was smelling like urine, and I was looking at the marquee, and I was like, there's no way I cannot be one of these guys. So I was like, okay, I wanna be an artist. There's no plan B. I mean, for me it wasn't. I mean, it's kind of you know reckless for other people, but for me, there was no plan B. So it was either I gotta make it, or I'm gonna smell like urine. Itself, the wire was, I guess, what changed my perspective on the career and who I was as an artist because I was doing theater and I loved theater and I thought that was it. And my manager called me and said, they got a show on HBO called The Wire and they want you to come in and audition. And I was like, HBO was hot. All right, that's, that sounds cool. What's the character? And she said a junkie named Bubbles. And I was like, what? You know, are they making fun of drug addicts? No, I'm not going in for Bubbles. That sounds crazy. And then my manager, being a small woman, was like, no, no, they didn't offer you the part. They said go in and audition. If you book it, then turn it down and we'll see how you feel about your integrity. And you don't, you're not, you don't want to be a character named Bubbles. So I was like, oh, I'm, I'm a book it. Like, you challenging me? I don't care who's in the room, I'm gonna book it. So I go in, and there's like 50 people there, and everybody, you know, all you know, blacks in New York, we all know each other. What up, what up, what up? You here for bubbles? You here for bubbles? Yeah, I'm here for bubbles, and I'm sitting there and I'm seeing everybody chewing bubble gum. So I went to the bathroom, and I threw out my gum, because I didn't want to be like everybody else. And I, I, I went in and I um, you know, I, I killed it. I, I, I just dropped into just being a person and not a not a, not a cliche. And they made me audition like five times. And at one point they called me up and was like, okay, you're the guy, you're the guy that we want. And when I got it, it just hit me with such a great uh, validation. And it hit me with such a confidence that I knew then that I would, I would, I would never do anything else but this craft.